Hi guys, my name is Anna. I'm really glad that EMBC conference has taken place this year despite of the current situation. And thanks a lot to organizers for making this happen today. So at Actia, we're a team of 16 people. Uh, we are working on developing a cuffless blood pressure monitor that will allow 24 hour measurements uh, every day. Uh, on my side, I am taking care of clinical operations and algorithm development. And uh, at Actia in general, we like to challenge ourselves, but we also like to challenge our device. So that's why today I would like to present to you uh, a protocol that we designed uh, to, uh, uh, to gain a more realistic validation of our device and the devices with similar use cases. So what is actually the set and setting of blood pressure monitoring today? Uh, you can do it at doctor's office during your routine visit. And here the doctor will make sure that you, uh, you are seated and relaxed and your arm is positioned at the heart level uh, and that your measurement is reliable. Your doctor might also ask you to monitor your blood pressure at home yourself, uh, for example, once per day. Uh, it will allow a doctor to get more information about your state. Uh, but in this case, you will be the person responsible for making sure that your measurement is reliable. But in some cases, the doctor will need to know what your 24-hour blood pressure profile looks like. And why is it important? Because it is the best predictor of cardiovascular risk. Uh, in this case, doctor will, uh, will ask you to wear uh, this kind of device uh, for 24 hour and uh, the measurement will be taken every 20 minutes by inflating the cuff. And this procedure is quite uncomfortable though uh, because it interferes with your daily activities and uh, also actually prevents you from normal sleep. And that's when uh, self-triggered cuffed blood pressure monitor devices come. Uh, these uh, devices have a great clinical potential similar potential uh, to provide clinically relevant information as uh, ABPM devices. However, they accompany patients with, uh, throughout their daily activities without really interfering with them. And they also do not produce uh, any sleep. Uh, they do not disturb you during the sleep. However, there are a few things to keep in mind about these devices. First of all, they do not measure direct blood pressure, but they uh, estimate some physiological features and then estimate blood pressure from those features. And the second thing to keep in mind, as these devices are self-triggered, uh, user doesn't press the button to start the measurement. So it's the device that actually decides when is the right moment to monitor your blood pressure. And with this, we can imagine the whole range of uh, daily life situations in which you are not in the position seated and relaxed and your, uh, your arm is not at the heart level. And what does it mean? Well, actually in different body position, uh, your intrinsic blood pressure values are different. And when your arm is not at the heart level, you can expect um, uh, 7.5 millimeters of mercury overestimation for each, 20, uh, for each 10 centimeters of height. Uh, so these are the things that can happen to self-triggered cuffless monitors. Um, However, these questions are not yet addressed with the existing protocols that were not designed for cuffless devices. And that's why with our team, we decided to, de to design a new cuffless friendly validation protocol to be able to assess our device in a more realistic scenario. So we suggest to have to include two things into this protocol. First is hydrostatic pressure challenge and poster change challenge. And we advise the investigators to make sure that they choose a reference device wisely because the reference device uh, have to uh, provide accurate measurements in those two challenges. Uh, we also suggest to have uh, to include four building blocks in the protocol, uh, which are cuffless friendly. So first is initialization procedure, then baseline assessment, meaning that we measure uh, the blood, we measure blood pressure in seated and relaxed position with the heart, uh, with the head, uh, arm at the heart level. And we also suggest to, to have those two challenges, posture change challenge and hydrostatic ch uh, challenge. We suggest to report uh, 
overall blood pressure changes that were induced uh, by the protocol and was just to report the performances in terms of mean and standard deviation of there, like in ISO uh, overall and also for each measurement condition. We also suggest to report the ability of the device to reject unreliable measurements, which we call the acceptance rate. Uh, so we tested our device according to this protocol. This is how our device looked like. Uh, it it, it uh, measures optical signals at the wrist and from them we estimate blood pressure. It provides measurements 24 hours, seven days per week, and it has, uh, you can wear it for one month without recharging the battery. Uh, here is, uh, and now let's uh, dive into the actual protocol that we implemented to design, to, to test our device. Uh, we chose finger arterial blood pressure monitoring device, which is also sometimes called volume clamp device, uh, as a reference. Uh, why is that? Because we know that this device has been tested and it provides accurate measurements in uh, different body positions and it also has a hydrostatic pressure uh, corrector. Um, within the protocol we uh, of course implemented the four building blocks, uh, the incisation procedure, the baseline assessment, as well as posture change intervention. We asked patients to uh, to change their position. We measured blood pressure in sitting, supine and standing positions. And we also uh, implemented the exercise um, condition to make sure that our device is able to measure blood pressure changes. For the hydrostatic bias intervention, we created a condition in which um, we asked patient to lower their arm 30 centimeters below the heart level and position the arm on the lap. Here are the results in terms of study population. 10 healthy volunteers participated to the study, including five females. Uh, we were able to induce some uh, significant uh, blood pressure changes for both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Uh, and now let's look at the overall performances in terms of mean and standard deviation of the error. As you can see, uh, these performances were good and satisfied uh, ISO requirements for both systolic and diastolic pressures. Uh, now let's go uh, and look into, uh, look into a posture change challenge. So here uh, you can see the mean and standard deviation of the error for diastolic and systolic blood pressures. We see that uh, for all conditions, uh, the requirements were satisfied except for the standing position. Um, you see that here the standard deviation is higher than eight millimeters of mercury. But now if we look at the acceptance rate, we see that in this condition that our algorithm was able to reject most of the measurements considering them as being unreliable, uh, which is great news. Now let's look at the hydrostatic uh, bias challenge. For this, let's look at the condition arm on the lap. You see that we were able to satisfy ISO requirements in terms of mean and standard deviation of the error. However, the error that we could have expected here is about 20 millimeters of mercury. So it's pretty good results. We are happy with the, the performances of our device. So to conclude, Actia Breastet was able to provide accurate measurements in sitting and spine positions and is not affected by hydrostatic bias. Uh, I would like to thank you for following this presentation and to leave you with the message that we believe that cuffless devices have a great potential for 24-hour blood pressure monitoring, but only if systematically validated. And I would like to say once again, big thanks to you and also to, uh, to thank the entire team that is working really hard every day to make this happen. Uh, if you have um, more questions or if you, if you would like to learn more about uh, what we are doing, please visit our website. And if you have further questions for this presentation, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of the conference.